absolutely delighted to um, be here today talking to you about how you might be able to create your ultimate learning culture. So what I've noticed over the last probably three to five years, maybe not as much as five years, is that some of the companies that we work with are finding it harder and harder to engage with their learners. Now, there's lots of reasons for that, and we'll talk about some of them in a minute. So what I did was I started asking my colleagues in advertising and marketing, so what's your secret then? What, what, the, what are the tricks of the trade? And what I'm going to share with you today is what I've distilled from a number of different people and a number of different campaigns they've worked on. One that hasn't come up is actually not being able to access the learning that easily. So it's not at the right time or the right place or the login is difficult or they've got to remember um, what the link is, those sorts of things. And to be honest, if that's any of your problems, then you should just get a little working party together and get all of those things fixed because they should be fairly easy to fix. Let's have a think about your learners now. People can be totally disruptive and disengaged in, in, in as far as they're actively dissuading people to use the learning. They can be passive. They don't, you know, you're apathetic lot. They're not really bothered one way or the other. Doesn't even re re register on in their minds, really. Um, people who are actually are interested in principle, but some of those objections that we talked about just now, the ones about um, they don't have enough time or they don't see the relevance, so they think they should be engaged, but they didn't quite get over that. And then we've got the people that, um, that we all love and adore. They're the ones who are actively interested, so they realize that learning can help them in their career, it can help them with their performance, and they are positively engaged and sign up for things. Then we get the people who maybe are much more career minded and strategic about it. So they are they know what's in it for them, they know what's in it for the business, and they're thinking much longer term and they certainly wouldn't duck out at the last minute because they'd be protecting it. And then we've got the advocates and they're going back into the business and saying, What? You haven't done that yet? Oh my goodness me, it helped me do this, it helped me do that, and it helped me do the other. So what is my simple process? Here we go. It starts about with being very clear about what your brand is. And there's two ways to look at your brand, which I'll come to in a moment. It moves on to knowing your audience, which actually in learning and development, we're usually pretty good at in, in many respects. It then moves on to understanding what message you're trying to put across to this audience. How you're going to put that message out to them. So what's your mix? I'd like to introduce you to what I would call a campaign approach and then evaluation at the end. I'm not sure if any of you have heard this um, statistic. It's Jay Abrahams wrote, uh, wrote a book about selling, so some of you in sales might have heard it. And um, I don't know how true it is still today. It might be... Um, even harder these days. But the statistic that he established was that in order for somebody to start to engage back with you in terms of a sales process, uh, you needed to touch them eight times before they bought. So just sending out one email saying what's coming up in the next month or having a catalog on your shelf is not touching someone eight times. And um, evaluation is really important. I'm going to talk about that in a minute. But certainly from your campaigns, you need to see how people are engaging in that and how you can manage and evaluate that. Because what's quite interesting about engagement is one word can make the difference. Um, you know yourself what you open and what you don't open. Uh, that all comes back to understanding your audience and getting your messaging right. But um, when you use a campaign ap approach, because you'll have more than one thing going on, you're better able to test and evaluate that. 